Are you trying to create your first game, but find yourself staring at an empty screen with endless options? What do you do next? Well, this is Hubert. Hello there. And he's here to give you five simple tips to make navigating the events page super easy. One, if then. This is the core concept of the event sheet. If the left side, known as the condition, is true, then the right side, known as the action, will happen and will continue to happen repeatedly approximately 60 times a second until the condition is no longer met. So, if you want your player object to take damage when they collide with an enemy, such as a slime, your condition could be player object is in collision with enemy object, and your action could be apply two points of damage. But remember, this will continue to happen, and quickly, until the if side of the statement is no longer true. We can fix this here by making the condition a bit more restrictive. In this case, utilizing the cooldown feature for damage behavior. And number two, we have sub-events. Sub-events are those little indents you can see on the condition side, also known as child events. The event they are connected to above is called the parent event. For the code in a child event to be executed, the parent event must be true. So our new sub-event will only trigger if our player object and enemy object are currently colliding and our cooldown is ready. When should we use sub-events? Well, sub-events allow us to add actions to our current event, but with additional restrictions compared to the parent event. Adding an action in the parent event will do the exact same thing as adding it in the child event while the condition is empty. But once you add more conditions in the sub-event, they will only affect the new actions. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we want to add a knockback feature that pushes our player object to the right. Well, something that simple can just be placed in the normal action, but we have an additional requirement. We only want this to happen if our enemy object is on the left of our player. Now we will need a sub-event because we don't want the damage actions to be affected by our new condition. We still want the damage to happen if the enemy is on either side of our player, but we only want to get pushed to the right if the enemy is on our left. Of course, we want the knockback to work from either side as well. So we will also create a second sub-event for when the enemy is on the right, knocking the player to the left. Both these sub-events rely on the initial collision event, but depending on the situation, because of our new conditions, only one can happen. Three, choosing specific instances. First off, what is an instance? To answer that, let's first talk about objects. Objects are any physical element added to your game. While objects don't need to be visible or even have a size, they are essentially the building blocks of your game world. Objects can be characters, platforms, items, or even invisible areas that trigger events. Now, an instance is any specific copy of an object placed in your game scene. In this scene, I currently have my ground object and my player object. These objects both have one instance each, so if you tell the game engine to do something with that object, it will know to use the only instance. But what happens if you have two or more of an object? Earlier, we had two enemy objects, or more specifically, just one object. They were both slimes, but with two instances. If you have an action that says delete enemy slime, how will the engine know which instance of the slime to choose? The instance is chosen based on what has been selected earlier in the events. So with our current code, if we had two instances of slimes and two instances of skeletons, we could create a new sub event and have an action to delete the slime, and this would work just fine. Since we had already decided that the instance of the slime that we are working with is the one that came in contact with our player object, and that will be the one that will be deleted. However, if we added a new sub event and we have the action delete a skeleton, the engine would not have any context as to which skeleton you want to delete it and will end up deleting all of them. Therefore, you must have selected a specific instance within the event that you are trying to make the action affect, or its parent. Having a separate sub-event on the same level or lower child will not help the engine decide which instance you are trying to work with. Number four, conditions are always being checked. Now, this one can be a bit tricky because an event added on day one could be affecting code months down the road. In our example, we may want to add an animation that plays while our player is idling. Using the platform character behavior, we can check if our player object is on the floor and also not moving, and if those two conditions are true, we can set our animation to idle. And, since we are working with animations, 
We could also want to use an injured animation for when our player collides with our enemy. However, after adding the play injured animation to our actions, nothing seems to happen. This is because almost as soon as your player changes to the injured animation, they switch right back to the idle animation, since our previous code is checked right afterwards. This issue happens because we have a very broad condition that is checked before playing our idle animation. An error like this can be fixed by adding extra requirements to our condition, such as player is not playing injured animation. While this is simple to spot here, where the events are nearby, it becomes much more difficult to notice when there's hundreds of events. And number five, the engine reads code down the event page. In GDevelop, the engine reads the code from the top to the bottom. This means the order of your events can impact the outcome, sometimes preventing the desired result. While it's often best to keep all actions triggered by the same condition within one event, this isn't always feasible. Let's take a look at Hubert again, and we'll break our collision event down into several events. One, on collision, set the animation to injured. Two, on collision, give our player object two points of damage. And three, on collision, delete the nearest line. With this setup, all these actions occur as expected. But what happens if we move the delete near slime event to the top of our event sheet? If the slime is deleted first, the following events no longer meet collision conditions and won't trigger. So make sure you are cautious of how you order your events. As always, a huge thank you to my channel members. Your support is truly appreciated. If you aren't a channel member and would like to go above and beyond, please take a look at the description for the link to my members page. Otherwise, you can always show your support by subscribing to the channel or throwing a thumbs up on the video. Hope you found this video helpful. Until next time.